Let's talk a little bit about dehydrating uh, some meats then and start with the jerky. What's the best way to get started uh, storing meats? Okay, well this is the easiest, simplest thing you can possibly do when it comes to learning how to uh, make jerky, make beef jerky. It's the, this here right is a hamburger shooter. It's a beef jerky shooter. And we just mix up a regular, just hamburger. It's really best to have a really a lean hamburger, but some people will just uh, buy the buy the cheapest hamburger they can buy, and uh, it works too. It works too. What we're going to do here, we've already set our scale. We're going to make one pound of, of beef jerky here, and uh, we're going to mix one package of cure and one package of spices, and we're going to use we're going to use the the regular, original beef jerky uh, spice pack there. And then this cure, we're going to mix one package of that in there. Cures are usually, um, well, originally they were salt, but this is this is sodium nitrate. And uh, it's it's just the, the preservative. It's just the thing that, that keeps it. Okay, we got... Let's see how we're doing here. We have to reset this, I think. Yeah, that's okay. And then we'll get this up. We'll take one pound. Get that up exactly. One pound of hamburger. A little bit more. That's just one pound of hamburger right on the button right there. And you can see that's right on the button. One pound. And then we're gonna we're gonna maybe flatten this out just a little bit so we can pour that out evener and maybe we can mm -hmm. mix it in there a little bit better. And this I'll just sprinkle this cure around. This is what makes it keep. And I guess this is what makes it taste good. And that's what makes it taste good. The same thing with that. Now we've we've chosen this American Harvest uh, jerky kit, and there are three three different flavors in there. There's a I believe a a pepperoni and uh, what is the other one there? Cajun, isn't Pepperoni it? Pepperoni and Cajun, yeah. sure. There, we've got this broke up here, and now we'll just mix this up. Get it mixed up pretty good. I can remember back when I was little, and we would butcher, and, and we would put the sausage in a great big crock, and, and sometimes just a big wash tub, and my dad would roll up his sleeves, and he would put that seasoning in there, and you could work that in there it's sometimes for half an hour, just working that seasoning into that meat. Using salt probably instead of uh, sodium nitrate. They, they really did. They really did when they made sausage. It was it was mostly it was mostly salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. Probably didn't quite give you the uh, shelf life or whatever. That well, time. well, no. At that the stuff time, what they would what they would really what they would really do they would mix that up and then they would. Put it in casings, put it in casings, and then and then can a lot of it. Mm -hmm. We can that, can the sausage. And how oh, was that good? We used to have that in the morning with pancakes. We've just about got this mixed up good enough. It also mixes up as it goes out of the jerky shooter it also mixes a little bit there and the, the cure and the, and the seasoning sort of finds its way through the meat too it sort of spreads through this is kind of the simplest way to, to mix a small amount like this Usually, if you have a dehydrator like we have here, and you're really 
making this, you'll you'll probably make it make two, four pounds or more. Where we're just making one pound here at a time as a demonstration. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're we're all set here. Prepare to load the jerky yep, shooter. We'll load the jerky shooter now, and we'll just put that this sausage in the this end of the jerky shooter. We have to be careful we don't put in too much, so we want to be able to put our plunger in. Okay, we'll try that right there. And let's see, let's, yep, we'll push that little button in and There, we've got our, our jerky shooter. Get that out of the way. Yeah, we can just set that up there. And we'll just get out a tray here. Lay it right down here. Just like that. And we need a scissors over there. Too. Just happen to have the scissors. Okay. You gonna you know, cut? I'll go ahead okay. and do the cutting. Okay. You do the jerky shooting. Okay, I'll do the jerky shooting and you're gonna do the cutting. Let's there we go. That's good for one. There you go. The length of uh, the jerky is a function of probably where you're going to store it, what That's kind of storage true. containers That's you have. That's true. Yep. So if you want to make them longer, obviously, to fit in a yep. quart, that you could do that. That and your appetite, I suppose. Your average appetite. and okay. You may want to make a little bitty short ones and just little bite-sized pieces too. And because uh, you're limited in length, going the other way to the length of the uh, tray. So you yeah, could, that's true. You couldn't make like you would a, have a long piece a of six footer there, you? if you wanted to. It'd be hard. Yeah. This smells very, very good. It's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. Whoops. Boy, that was almost tragic. Yeah. Sure is easy though, isn't it? It seems pretty easy. Finish up the tray. You want to we'll you want to load it up as much as possible because it does oh, take yes. a while to do jerky, does it not? Yep. Now I believe too, if you pack that down in, if you hold your hand over or block the end and pack that down in it will come out real even and you won't have these. They'll all look just like that one. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of an art form maybe. And I think there's probably certain things you can say with a jerky mate, you know, with a jerky maker that you can't say in other art forms. <laughs> I, I don't really. Okay, there we've got one tray. Do we have a little more here? We might as well. Uh, there's a little bit more. Yeah, let's just let's just go ahead just and finish it out here. And if you've got the courage. Yeah, we have. We might as well do it all there. Those are nice looking strips there. Aren't they? they are nice. Almost like they shouldn't be eaten. Yeah. And we're at the end there. I think that's it. Unless there? you want to load it up and just finish off right, that. Let's finish that. Let's what finish that up here. You only go around yeah, once no, in life, huh? That's right. To do this demonstration. Oh, well, how about the cayenne? Well, if you would want it a little bit hotter, yes. we could sure put that in, but. And it depends on how close to the border <laughs> you live, I guess. And if you don't like it as hot as this is, why well, you can always just put a little more meat in it and do the same thing. But I think cayenne is something you get used to. I, I think like it's something cayenne. you have to, you know, acquire the acquire the taste. I don't know if I don't not sure whether you I acquire the taste or whether you acquire the ability to to handle it, cayenne. True. I would think cayenne would also act as a uh, preservative. 
Oh, I'm as sure. Well. Yeah, I yeah. think it would also give you more uh, right longevity. I think it does. At the expense of a little stouter taste. Yeah. Now, now you're starting to do things with that. Yeah, we're starting to really. You're really starting to get already there, aren't we? I'm not sure what we're saying there, but. person can spend a long time and get them just right if he wanted to, mm -hmm. but when they they dry, they kind of turn and things like that, and and it doesn't really doesn't really pay to do that. There we go. We're down at the end. Hey, there you we go. finished out our tray real nice. We've got a lot of jerky there. Yep. Now we'll put it in the dehydrator, and we're going to turn this on for one hour. What's the temperature that you want to do jerky at? About 145 degrees. 145, usually they okay. yes. Usually, no matter what brand of dehydrator you use, they always say the highest setting. It's about 145. But with this hamburger jerky, we're going to do it one hour. Then we're going to we're going to take it out, and we're going to blot it with a paper towel. We're going to take a paper towel and blot it real good. Get off some of the oil and fat. A little and fat. Starts to little droplets of up. fat, and they'll come up, and there'll be little white droplets of fat. And we're going to blot those off, then we're going to turn it over, and we're going to blot it on the other side. Okay. And then we're going to put it back in. And then it might take two hours, it might take 15 hours. It depends on the, uh, depends on the temperature. It depends and how do you know when it's, when it's done? Well, I mean, between the two hours and 15 hours is a big range there. So right. if you're going you to check, check it out, it how do you? every once in a while. You want to you wanna be able to, to bend it right before it breaks, but you don't want it to break. Okay. But you want to be able to bend it and... It's still not not break like that, and but if you bend it completely over, it would almost break, you know, and crack okay. through. But that's so that's you, want, about you want it kind of leathery before you even check. Right, it. yeah, right, yep, sure do. And then when you when it is done, when it is done, it'll be hot when you open this up, and you want to take some paper towel and lay this out, and and uh, I think we'll show I think we'll show how to do this later. We'll lay this out and put another paper towel over the top of it. And leave that there for a while. Let it cool mm -hmm. in those, and that will help s just absorb some of that fat that's some in the sure. that's in the beef jerky. And uh, it'll be much, much, much better, and it'll it'll last. It lasts much longer when you do that. That helps. That helps the the uh, storage life of it when you get that get that fat out. Great. Okay, now we'll just we'll just set this for an hour, and uh, it's on 145. And we'll just set this for one hour, and we'll come back and and uh, blot that jerky out. See you in an hour. Now I see it's just about one hour has passed, and we're going to blot the strips of jerky that we have made. And we'll just give you an idea of what we have here. Okay, you can probably see see the grease on the jerky, the droplets of grease on the jerky, just a minute. Maybe we can just set this right here and, and have the camera just come in for a close-up there so you can see that a little bit better. Now, let me show you just what we're going to do here. We're going to take a couple sheets of towel and just lay them down on the jerky. Just kind of blot them down, just blot them down a little bit, just like that to get the the grease to go up into the towel. This stuff is starting to look good already. And it just takes a little time here for that to to absorb. Most of the grease is on the bottom. As you will see here when I turn this over. Now watch this when I turn these over. You'll see the grease, uh, the shininess. We'll do a close-up here on that in a minute. So as I have it all turned over, then you will see how greasy the bottom really is. Get up there now. We'll Blot the bottom side the best we can. I don't believe it 
hearts to spend quite a bit of time doing this. It's not hurry when you do this. You could really let this, let the fat and grease be absorbed by the towel. So take your time. Just take your time when you do this. And the more expensive meat you buy, the less blotting you'll have to do. You'll find that out. Okay. There we go. So we'll put that back in. And we'll check our temperature is 145 and we'll just We'll just set this for, we'll just set it for eight hours, and then we'll check this every hour as we go along here. Okay, it's been about eight hours, and we've been checking this jerky along and about every hour, and we believe that it's about ready. So we'll take this out, and we'll just show it to you. It looks just plain beautiful. Maybe I can bring a strip of this around and we can get a close-up. Here, I don't know if the camera will focus down here like this. Let's just try this. About like so, and we'll just break this. An idea of just exactly how done this is. Break this, it looks real, looks real good there. Now we'll just lay this out, lay this out on these towels, and fold them over, and just leave them set. Just like this. Let's just keep this up. We'll get another tray and very quickly get this on here. Now we can we can put a, quite a few in here. And we'll just leave these blot by themselves until they are completely cold, until they've cooled down. And then we'll put them in a, there we go, put them in a jar or a Ziploc bag. Or you can even vacuum seal them if you want to. And of course they'll keep a long time like this. So very, very long time if you keep them in the refrigerator. There we go. Now we can just leave these, leave these go like this until they're cool. We could set this on top like that if you wanted to to give it a little pressure down on there and help a little more of that, get a little more of that grease out. We'll just leave these just like this for a little while. Okay, about a half an hour has gone by. Our jerky is cool now. And we can store it about a lot of different ways. You can put it in a mayonnaise jar. You can put it in a fruit jar. Or you can put it in Ziploc bags, which we will do right now. Lock bags, you seem to be able to squeeze them in any place so they work real, real nice for storage. Two nice bags of jerky here, and one strip on the floor, which won't go to waste if you have a dog. 
And if you don't have a dog, you can always give it to the birds. Beautiful. Well, that sort of winds up the jerky out of hamburger part of this tape. Tomorrow morning, bright and early, we're going to pull out a piece of sirloin tip I believe we have in the refrigerator, and we're going to show you how to make jerky a little different way. We'll see you in the morning. Okay, this morning we're going to take some sirloin tip, make some jerky out of it. This is, this is about as good a jerky as we can expect to uh, come up with. We'll start off, we're going to use a, a, a jerky kit that came right along with the, with the Excalibur dehydrator. It's kind of hard and cakey inside. We'll just break it up a little bit. This is probably the, the easiest, the easiest of all, the easiest method of all, the easiest jerky you'll ever come up with. And we'll see here, get this open. And we'll, there we go. And we'll see what we can, what we can do. One of the better ways is to put this in a, in a salt shaker. And, and as we can see in there that we're going to have to tap it a little bit more so we get that, the cakes out of there. But if you'd like to have it come out of the, out of the salt shaker if we possibly could. Another method would be to put this in a Ziploc bag. We'll try that. We'll just put this in a Ziploc bag. operation, isn't it? We'll just see how this works. We'd sure like to be able to shake it. If the holes are too small in, in your salt shaker and you still want to use this system, just take an all and make those holes a little bit bigger. Okay, this method says to cut the meat about 3 16th of an inch thick. So you want them you want them pretty thin. Pretty thin. Let's just lay them right out here. Pretty thin. We'll lay them right lay them right on this towel just so we can see this a little bit better. And this is about what we'll we'll do here on this with this method. And it's a good idea to experiment with like maybe three pieces and uh, you put a little bit on one, a little bit more on another one and uh, quite a bit on the third one because it's very very hard to know just exactly what you want. Try to get, try to get them even, try to get it all over. If you just notice that, that it seems to be disappearing when you put it on. And that's, that's good because it will kind of dampen and go into the meat. We'll let that just we'll let set for a minute, maybe. And then you can turn that over like that. We'll hurry things along because our tape and camera are right. And we'll Shake some on this side. Wouldn't hurt a bit if you would put this in the refrigerator and leave it set for an hour. 
before you put her in the dehydrator. But with this kit, you don't really have to. You don't really have to do that. This is how simple this is. This is unbelievably simple. not got too much on there that's just about a, a mild be a mild jerky there put that in there and we could just turn this on just turn this on and, and start it out check it every hour and you want to you want to get the the jerky so you can bend it and it will crack but not break you want it to crack but not break you ready to talk about bananas? I'm ready to talk about bananas. And fruit in general? First of all, here with the bananas, we're going to just buzz right through this. So, First of all, we're going to take some sodium bisulfite, put it with some water. We'll have a, a sulfate solution then. And we're going to slice the bananas, put them sure. in there. It will work on the enzymes a little bit, so, and also keep the banana from turning real, real brown. So here we go. Let's use one tablespoon for a half gallon, two tablespoons for a gallon. Let's see what we got here. And if we don't have uh, sodium bisulfite, you if can you use don't have lemon anything else, well. use lemon juice. Yeah, you use lemon juice. That's about right. Okay, we'll just put that in there. You start working on these, and I'll start mixing up our okay. bisulfite. We're just going to do a couple bananas. Now, where, can you buy, you where can you buy the? Didn't mean to interrupt you. How? how um, where can you buy the bisulfite? I bought this from the same company that I bought the de food dehydrator from. Okay. The Excalibur company. However, you can go to a drugstore and ask them for some sodium bisulfite, and I'm sure that they will be able to either sell you some or order you some. Ask the chemist, as our European friends would say. Yeah. Sodium bisulfite is one of the uh, lowest priced antioxidants. I was going to say, that's an antioxidant. There is. The reason they don't use, they, they could use actually vitamin C powder, but it's far more expensive. Is it really? But uh, it could be used. And some people do. Some people do use. You got that mixed up? Oh, I think it's plenty good. I'm just putting them right in there. Do you think we can just put them right in there and then get them out with our spoon? Why not? And I'll just put them in there and, and you can kind of work them around with the spoon. Okay. And we'll just go through this very, very, very fast. How long fast. do we have to keep them in here? Five minutes. All right. If you leave them in very much longer, they start to soften around the outside and, and they're kind of hard to separate when you put them in the dehydrator. It says on the book that the slices should be about one-eighth of an inch. That's pretty, that's pretty thin. See, an eighth of an inch is very, very thin like that. So we've got about five minutes up. I'll bet that's what uh, our five minutes is up. Let's get some of these out of here. Yeah, just get them all ready to out of here real quick. On the dehydrator. Wow, that's working good. How long do you want to keep them in the dehydrator? Six to ten hours. We don't really know. We'll, we can set it for six and then just, just check it every see half an hour or hour to see, see how it's coming. You want to work on these while I yeah, finish I up the yep, balance? Just, yep, just dump them out here and, and I'll, just, and I'll, and I'll just spread them out the best I can. We do our buyer bananas from a fully licensed uh, grocery store. That's right. We'll put it in there. Okay, we'll set that for... 135, and we'll set this for 135. Yes, and we'll set it for six and, uh, hours. Six hours. Yep, and we'll check them then. 
and that's how you do bananas. Okay, this is what they look like after they come out of the dehydrator. This is what they taste like. Great. Great with breakfast food. And the problem with banana chips is once you start eating them, it's hard to. They're just like candy. Stop. What do we got? Time to do some tomatoes. All right. Let's start. Let's start right off the bat. Now I peel these tomatoes when I dry them. You don't. You don't really have to do this. You can just. You can just cut them. But I. I peel them. And to peel them, I put them in boiling water first, for just a. About. Thirty seconds, something like that. This sort of helps separate the. skin from the from the tomato. Breaks the cell wall down a little bit. That's right it does. That's right it does. We'll just have a tray here. We can put that on. Put that one on. We'll put the other one in the water there. And we'll just very quickly see if we can peel this. If you do this in the sink, it's much, much easier because you can do it under cold water. You can have cold water running on the mm. on the tomato while you peel it. If the, if the tomatoes are just perfectly ripe and the, and the water is just the right temperature, these skins will just almost pop off. They'll just You can almost take them off just with your hand. You just okay. rub them right off. So you like tomatoes a lot. How many... What? If you're storing dried foods, well, tomatoes. How, how much tomatoes do does a guy want to have? Does a family want to have? You almost can't get enough tomatoes. It's one of those things. It seems like uh, in the winter time there are so many things you can put tomatoes with. Everything from you know chili to just there's just practically no end to it. See. And as far as dried, I'm talking about it's you, re you just regular constituted. Yes, you can Prior reconstitute and look at the tomato soup. Now, why, why, do, why do you, again, take the, take the skin off? I'm sure it'll dry with... Uh, yes, it'll dry. It it'll dry. I just, I just like the looks of them better. It just seems like you don't have... Once they dry, you just don't have that skin on there. That skin kind of... It doesn't dry with the rest of the tomato, and it kind of uh, is noticeable. I wonder if it's gonna, it would affect drying time, do you think? It probably had no, a little time to it. Oh, a little maybe, ahead. but not, not much. It's tomatoes dry a little bit differently than some things. They just almost dry in, into paper thin. You can start with something real thick and a real thick slice and, and uh, over a quarter of an inch and, and, and it just dries down to practically nothing. Okay, here we go. Let's just set this Careful with hot that water hot. over here. Yeah, we just brought that in just to just to do that. All right, now you got some tomatoes. What are we going to do next? Okay, we're going to we're going to slice these real thin slices. And sometimes, if tomatoes are are real, real, real ripe, they're hard to slice because they just they're so soft. Well, this tomato here is. Not really. The let's have let's have that big butcher knife. That's right. that's that's pretty good. That's a tomato slice. knife. That's it? that's a tomato knife. Oh, look at the difference. Yeah. There. Oh, much difference. Yeah. You just can't beat one of these. Oh. How about thinness? Well, How about thickness, these are I mean, rather than right. the, Does that matter for drying yeah, very much? About a quarter of an inch, something okay. like that. Just the best you can, the best you can do. Just something that you don't worry just too awful much about. Okay. But uh, half inch of course to be too thick, you know, but and we can just lay this down and get it started like this. And then kind of finish that. Okay, let's lay these back in our tray and we'll just quickly slice this one for this. Okay. Okay, here we go. And let's what do we want to do now? Well, put them in give, them, give, them, give them some time in here. Yep, let's put them in here. Another five minutes is like the just like we did before. Put them in here and 
do them all at the same time this time. Give them five minutes. I'm down in there real slow. I'll mix them up a little better. Yeah. Okay. We'll just give them five minutes there. I believe that five minutes is up, don't you? I think it's up. I think it's time to take a good look at uh, the tomatoes. And we've had this running all the while. Gee, it's quiet in here. It is quiet now. Okay, let's... Okay. Okay, okay now uh, we're in the process. Tomatoes all drained off. We're ready to load. Okay, let's try this tray right here. A genuine, a genuine tomato tray here. Just yeah, just dump them out there. That's we don't have to get. You just don't have to be a, a rocket scientist to dry tomatoes, but it helps. It would, I suppose, help you could figure out exactly how many you could get on there, or the spacing mm -hmm. would probably yeah. be more tight if you were a that's rocket really scientist. True. We got this just about just about right. Missed a spot. How's that? Perfect. Okay. We'll put these right in here. And tomatoes, how long again? Can we Well, these tomatoes, let me let me get you something here. To get them right about like that. Took about nine hours. These are nine hours and these are tomato. But generally generally depend on the humidity, five to nine hours, something like that. Okay. And you'll you'll have those. Now these these tomatoes, now there's quite a few tomatoes in there, really. And of course it's not really packed very tight. Oh no, no, it's you could loose. You could take that down if you want to just uh, you know the powder so you you know for soup. You don't have to keep them looking like this. You can just you smash that down and you could put a you probably I don't know whether you put a dozen tomatoes in there now, but you can put a lot of tomatoes in there. Sure. An awful lot. There's a lot of water in tomatoes, so you could really pack so. them down. And you store yours in these jars? Yes. Just like the like yes, the I do. You could, you don't have to. You can you can put them in an old mayonnaise jar, put them in a mayonnaise jar, you can put them in a Ziploc bag, or you can vacuum seal them in, in a pack and save type True. thing you can buy it at, uh, at a discount store. Oh, these are nice to have just sitting around. They look nice just sitting there. Yeah, they, oh, they do. They really do. Cucumbers. What do you got to do with cucumbers? Anything different? Not very much. We're going to take these cucumbers. We're going to cut them in one eighth inch slices like this, just okay. exactly like that. Right like that. We're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to put them in the sodium bisulfite solution, which it turns into, into sulfate. We're going to put them in there for five minutes, just like that. We're going to put them in the dehydrator and dry them for, oh golly, about 48 hours, something like that. It depends. It just it depends. You have to just keep checking them. Yeah, there's okay. no there's no exact time when it comes to uh, drying foods because, and when we're through, we're going to have something just about like this. Now these are. This, Let me feel the texture of that. This is different. You're going you to almost have to reconstitute these, and uh, and then put them on some kind of a sour cream. Oh, type. sure, you can do all kinds of stuff. And, with uh, this. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, there's not as many things to do with cucumbers, but. Uh, it's still it's still fun to do, and it's very easy. Anybody can do it. And now let's just let's move on to something else here, which we we didn't do when we did the tomatoes. I do green tomatoes, and in January when the wind blows out there, and everybody else is just uh, cuddling up, I have fried green tomatoes. I just Sounds reconstitute good. them. Reconstitute them. Soak them in water for about an hour or two. Get a little flour and salt and pepper, mm -hmm. and uh, fry them. And you so just you can't beat a January treat like that. Reconstituted. And, uh, and I'll bet you next winter, next January, when I'm eating these fried green tomatoes, there's not one single person in Joe Davis County that has fried green tomatoes in January. You'll be the only own, one. Out of his own cellar, right. I agree. With you. I'll be the only one. Gives you a feeling of security. Oh, does, doesn't it? What shall we do? What shall we do now? Here, I'll just tell you something. Here, we got a yeah, few what things. Else do you have? Well, we've got, these are beets. 
Now these are beets. You just about have to have to re reconstitute those and and, uh, and just use them just just like you would like you would. It smells like beets. Beet, yeah. And and here I are, love beets. Oh, I, would I would seriously? I love beets. Would I like? Would this be good? Sure. Sure. Let's see what it tastes like. Leathery. Yes, they are that way. You almost can't eat them that way. Needs water. But, yep, reconstitute them. And here we've got the same thing with turnips. These are turnips. You can also you can also dry kohlrabi, and you can use uh, use turnips or or kohlrabi as a substitute for potatoes in a lot of meals. You know, and especially especially when you now hold on once. One thing I can see. One th one trend that I see is that if you're going to store. Um, survival food or emergency food in any kind of quantities, given the fact that you have um, drying times of four to hours to up to nine hours, 12 hours, and so forth, you almost better have that dehydrator going full bore because it takes that much. De and it's one thing to make snacks or mm -hmm. to have a, a, a green tomato in January, but it's I think it's quite another thing to have a sufficient quantity of stuff, and so the idea would be to get started early and to start producing products all summer long. Exactly. Yes, and you can do that too because it's it really is no effort. One thing will be ripe. You say you're going to say you're going to can tomatoes or something like that in fruit jars, and you have you have some left over. You you have just too many more than the than the canner will hold. Well, you can throw some in the dryer, and it's really it's really no effort. There's no effort to that. And you can slice up anything. You just slice up the stuff as you go along. And uh, if you don't have, if you don't have uh, this type of a dip to put it in, you can use uh, the lemon. You can use the, mm -hmm. the lime juice. You can use anything like that. And you can use vitamin C. And you can just, you can just keep going. And you can the do anything. Would be, the object would be to keep that thing running. Oh Almost yeah, like a, yeah. Like keep a piece it of equipment that's making you money. If your dehydrator's running. You're making money. Mm -hmm. If it's sitting idle, you're not building a storehouse. It it there. looks like it it looks like uh, you know there's not very much stuff here when you get it tried. But this is a lot of food. I mean, this is a lot of food. This is up here. We've got uh, this. This was a, a small bag of potatoes. Hmm. A small bag of potatoes, and uh, and we dried them. Isn't it? Yep. yep. Amazing. One of those small bags of potatoes. You come home with the grocery store, and I just put it in the dryer. And also this, also this summer, what we had left the sweet corn on the cob that we didn't eat, I just boiled, cut it off, sprinkled it out, sprinkled it out on the. How long did the corn take? The corn took quite a while. I don't it would know take a lot. It probably would take about that, 12 hours. I think. Oh, I think that corn took 12, 14 hours. Yeah, yeah. I could see that with the hard soil. Yeah, water. that's that's for sure. And I believe, though, in some, if you have a real dry, real dry um, weather, why well, you can probably dry it, you know, in, in ten hours. But what about garlic? Mm. Well, I've dried some garlic here. Okay. Let me smell that once. It smells like garlic. Yep. And there's, there are two different kinds of garlic you, you can dry. The regular, real, real garlic. And that's what you have right there. Or if that's too strong for you, this is a hybrid. The elephant garlic is a hybrid. It's, it's not quite as strong. It's a milder. It's a milder garlic. And uh, I believe, uh, oh, there's a garlic festival in in California. And when they have this, where they'll have they'll have all kinds of soups and everything else you can try. And and they'll put an awful lot of this elephant garlic in some of that stuff. It's a it's a milder milder garlic. But, but what if you want to use this medicinally? Because well, that's what you would be. A, a lot that's of people what you would are be using garlic here. medicinally. There's more and more evidence that garlic has some type of uh, antibacterial right. power or whatever. So could you take? Here's my question. Um, could, could could I just could I just take this and swallow this with a glass of water? Would that be, be you could lot, do that? Be a whole lot cheaper than buying the pills that I buy. Yes, it, it would be. You could do that, or Probably just soak it in water for a little while, soften it up, and then and then then swallow it. And if it came out of my own garden, 
um, I definitely would have control over pesticides and oh, you know certainly would. as opposed to going to the health food store and buying stuff. And uh, talking about the coming out of your own garden, the fall of the year, you can just buy garlic like this at the store, the fall of the year, and uh, take this bulb apart and take these clothes and just and just just like you just like you plant tulips. Oh sure. Just like you plant tulips. You're you're planting the bulb just like tulips and put them in the ground and they'll they'll grow and then this and actually next fall you'll have garlic like this. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's that's the same thing. You can you can eat that just and another thing too, it it's hard to grind up. It's much much harder to grind up than uh, than onion. But uh, can you put it in a blender? Do, you could do the same thing. Can you put it in a blender? Yes, but it's 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 hard on them. It's it's a harder okay. thing to grind up. You might maybe a mortar pedestal might be better for that. That's, <laughs> maybe so. But anyway, that's that's garlic, and and you could you can grind that up and uh, put it in a in a salt shaker and, and put garlic powder and mix it with salt and garlic salt. You, can, you just make your own. And here we got some chives I did for the chive lover. Chives. What do you what do you do with chives? Well, chives are kind of a they're kind of an onion. They're kind of a mild onion. Well, onion speaking of onions, it? speaking of onions. So what here. do you do with this first? Is this mostly sort of decoration and kind of. Oh yeah, they use it, they use it in some uh, dishes and also in decoration, sprinkle around a, a meat dish and things like okay. that. Oh, okay. But here's the. Uh -oh. uh, onion, yeah. Watch yourself on this. This this is fun to do onions. Really, really fun. But I slice onions. I should get the board here. Slice these onions down. About eighth inch slices. Mm -hmm. Everything, I notice everything's about an eighth of an inch. Most of it is, yeah. Most of it is. Sounds like the ideal. Onions are, are strange to me because it, they take longer to dry than one would think. I put some Oh, I think onions. they're very fibrous. I put some onions uh, with some tomatoes one time, and, and the tomatoes were just dried down to paper thin, and the onions were still moist and, and wet. Mm -hmm. Well, here's what we'll do. We'll just continue slicing these, slicing these onions up here. And uh, I will peel this onion first. Kind of sad, isn't it? The whole onion thing. Yes, the whole onion <laughs> is is sad when you get too close to them with your eyes open. That's what I mean. It's it so sad. So onions are going to be back into that eight-hour range or whatever, 135, 145. No, no, you don't go back up to it with the heat. But it just takes longer. You just have so to keep you're checking on. So you 135 with them. And uh, yep, I'll go 135 with them. And, ooh, they're starting to get me already. This is terrible. Ah, I can't even see. I think we'll continue this tape after I see a little bit better here. Okay, we'll take some of. This tape out. All right, let's just let's just put these slices on here, quick. Now, what's that make the house smell like? Let's be candid here. Well, not very good. The other night I did some garlic in the basement, and I could smell that garlic all night long. Well, the neighbors didn't come over though. It's a wonder they didn't come over. Okay, we're just going to we're just going to get this started here. Now, when these I'll tell you when these onions Show me get the done, onions. Me we're going to have something just like we're going to have Bring something just onions. like this. I want to see how these they smell. I bet they and if you smell. cut them just right, oh, they don't smell anything like they smell like onions. If you cut them just right, they'll look like that. They'll look absolutely beautiful. Let's just hold this. Let's make sure that that camera guy can get that get a nice close up of that because that is beautiful. Okay, more we're onions. back to we're back to these onions. Well, I'll tell you, here's what you can do with onions. You can you can take them like this and use them. You, you can use them in use them in soups. You, oh, yeah, there's hundreds of things you can do with onions. Use them in soups if you want to. And if you want to have some more fun, just get out the old food chopper. Take that right off and take this 
a couple. Is it okay? Dump them right in there. It's okay to do this? Well, it's okay to do that. And put the lid on. You don't need any kind of licensure or anything? No. Or kind of permit from the government? And let's just turn this on and... Hey, look at that. Well, now you get onion powder. You can tap that down a little bit and just turn it on again. What's that worth on the black market? Ah, uh, I don't know. But well, you're, it's making, worth you're a, making a little worth a fortune out the, right? out the supermarket. Oh, we can just put this right. Look at that. We can just put that right in there, just like that. This out of the way here. We got ourselves instant onions. Instant onion powder. Everywhere Isn't you go. That something? And we can just take that and shake that right out like that. And if we want to, we can put a little salt in there and we got onion salt. Onion salt would be good. It's great. The kids could take it to school. Make they some could friends. if they wanted to. Sure. Maybe bar as a barter item. As a barter item during the Y two K thing. Who knows? Okay, and that just about winds up our show here on dehydrators and how to get started with dehydrators. It's really easy. Is there any kind of, lastly, is there any kind of dehydrator? You don't sell dehydrators, so is there any uh, kind of We don't sell dehydrators, but if, if anybody would like to give us a call, we know people who do, and uh, we'd be glad to let you know uh, what we know about dehydrators as far as which ones are best and uh, which ones work better than others. Some do work better than others. Sure. Okay. So, I guess that's just about it. That's it for the dehydration section, and we wish you luck and Godspeed in your food storage.